Hi there, this is Brian from Enlightened Speed, uh, giving you the first of the tips and tricks tutorial videos, uh, showing you just some of the ways that you can get a wee bit extra power out of the Loop Cracker Suite plugins. In this case, we're going to be showing you a wee bit more of Note Alter and a wee bit more of Card Bank and using them along with a matrix in order to develop a more powerful pattern sequencer. At this point, we haven't developed our own pattern sequencer yet. There is a kind of fledgling idea for doing one, but it's very, very early days and we would need to be able to make sure that it actually does something useful and unique before we really develop that any, any further. However, just We'll show you this way of using the matrix along with Note Alter and Chord Bank. And I'm pretty sure you'll see that this can actually give you a very robust and powerful sequencer on its own. In particular, this is of use to people who already have a lot of song files, particularly more legacy files with lots of different kind of matrix patterns available. So as well as just being for new music, um, it also gives a way of breathing life into a lot of old song files and stuff like that. This setup is fairly simple. It requires just uh, whatever your instrument is going to be. In this case, we are using Europa. Uh, you also need a matrix, obviously. Uh, in this case, we've also got a note alter and a chord bank. The chord bank, in this case, the patch loaded up is the double harmonic in C, which is just taken off the sound bank. Uh, it's set to scale only mode. And we've also got it so that it's muting the chord triggers as well. Of course, you don't have to do that. Um, if you were doing it live, then you could alternate it with remote so that some of the chord triggers do and some triggers don't. But for now, it makes it a wee bit easier to see what's going on. So I'm just going to flip the rack here. And we can see that the matrix pattern sequencer is not connected up to Europa. Uh, it's actually connected up to the note alter up at the top of the stack. And as with any player stack, it then just kind of waterfalls down. So uh, it goes from Matrix to Note Alter and into Chord Bank and then into Europa. So the Matrix has been randomised. Um, we'll just randomise it a few more times. Why not? Let's just have a quick listen to that. Won't be pleasant, but let's do it anyway. <laughs> Lovely. If we do that with the chord bank, then the effect will be that the chord bank will put everything into scale, so it'll be slightly more listenable. Fantastic. And again with chord bank, because of the way that it works with changing scales, uh, you have a scale allocated to each bank, so we'll just show that again and change scales while we're doing it. Okay, so you see the kind of the general idea there. Uh, for a start, you can change the scale really, really easily. Um, but what you can then do, where this really starts to take on the role of a more advanced pattern player, is when you use the note alter. So what, we, what happens is that, well, when the notes come through Matrix, if you push this up, uh, we've got the spread control set to 21. Uh, pull that down a little bit. See, so set that to about 11. And... What then happens is that any time if you push the probability up, then the more likely is that the notes that are coming from the matrix are going to be changed reasonably significantly before they're past the chord bank. In fact, actually, we'll make the spread higher uh, so that it's more obvious what's going on. Uh, just a wee bit more chaotic. So let's then just quickly listen to the effect of that. <laughs> Bye. 
there you have it, it's a nice simple trick really to pull off and it shows the advantages of using the players and note sequences in this kind of modular fashion. Another easy thing you could do if you weren't so keen on all the, the higher notes that this particular random sequence was generating, you could of course just stick a note filter in there and that would take out all of those if you wanted. And the same with any low notes if the, the sequence was going in that direction as well. You can use it on matrix patterns, be the be it brand new spanking ones that you've just put in or be it old legacy ones from old song files. And of course it works on sequencer material as well in the main reason sequencer. So I'm going to leave you to just kind of chew and digest this one for now. Um, there's a more complex version of this setup where you use a couple of different chord banks and the chord bank scale chain function uh, which we have here on the back. But I'll get to that in one of the later videos. Uh, obviously just enjoy this one for now. Thanks very much for your time. Take care. Bye bye.